Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision, and this is the second video on cameras. And in the last video, I showed you how to put a camera in a uh, flash system. And you can see the ball is moving back and forth as we move our camera forward and backwards. And now what I want to do is go, well, how do you do that in Paper Vision? And that's going to be the big question, right? So let's go back to our notes. And I just want to make a little statement here is that when I first did the book, there was a question as we begin to think about it. What are we going to write in? Is it going to be a flash book? Is it going to be a flex book? Is it going to be an air book? And what we decided to do is just do it all. And, the, and that's because the technology is changing so rapidly and there's so many tools now that you need to have basic and mastery of many. Now, uh, we also knew that we could not teach all the basic foundation of each one, so that's the whole purpose of the video series. You're going to find a ton of video tutorials on Flash, on Flex, on Flash Builder, on Flash Catalyst, and you want to go watch those to give you the foundation for the book. And so as we move through this series, uh, we're going to find that Flex is a great tool for tracking down and for editing and for finding out how things work. So now let's go to Paper Vision and let's open it up in Flex and track down how Paper Vision's camera works. We are now in Adobe Flex. Now, if you're not familiar with Adobe Flex, do not freak out. Uh, in the next chapter, chapter two, we're going to go through Adobe Flex. We're going to have a tutorial series on Adobe Flex. We're going to walk you through the process. And I'm also going to show you how to get Adobe Flex for free. So just kind of follow along here. I'm going to show you some tips here, and we're going to go over them again. But we want to track down, basically, Paper Vision's camera. Now, in the next chapter, chapter two, we show you how to get the Paper Vision classes. I'm just going to show them to you right now. And uh, we're looking at a little Christmas tree application here. I'll go ahead and run that and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to click on that. In Adobe Flex, you see I've loaded all the ActionScript code. I actually have a package here. And let's control test that so you can see how the application works. So here's a little Christmas tree application with some words inside of it saying it's a snowy Christmas. And uh, you got a little Christmas tree ornaments here, and you got your snow that's hitting a reflective surface. And as you uh, move your mouse, it goes faster on this side, or move it to the other, it reverses its direction. And this actually was kind of a combination of Seb Lyles and uh, John Linquist's uh, uh, web post that I actually put together and made a few modifications to. Of course, I'm always mucking with stuff. So that's the uh, Adobe Flex application. You run it just like you do in Flash, kind of a control test. In this particular case, you got a little green button at the top. You, you click to actually run the application. And that's not quite what we're going to do. We're not going to go over this application yet, but later in the book we will. But what we actually want to do is take a look at the Paper Vision classes. And we have a little folder here called Org, and that's where all the Paper Vision classes are. And we are using reverse domain syntax, which you learned in the uh, Flash video tutorial series. And so we have org paper vision. And in paper vision, we're going to look at the camera classes. And so we have several camera classes, camera 3D, camera type, uh, debug, and spring camera, which I love to death. And you'll learn about that in a later series. But I'm going to click on that camera class. I'm going to try to figure out what's going on here. So let's go ahead and move my uh, uh, recorder screen here so we can start looking at that package. And when we look at the camera class, you can see once again reverse uh, domain syntax right here, org.papervision3d.cameras. And you start to scroll down there. There's a lot of import classes. You don't know what those mean yet, but you'll find out. And then as you scroll down here, uh, this is how the camera is made. And whoa, this is a lot more complicated than my simple uh, focal length over focal length plus Z plus some camera parameter, is it not? And you may start looking at this and start really scratching your head. Man, this really bugs me. How am I ever going to be able to understand all this code? And we're going to walk you through it. What I want to do is just go back to basics. Remember, what is the equation for a camera? Well, going back to the notes, is focal length divided by focal length plus Z minus Z camera. So somewhere in this code, there should be something like this. So let's see if we can find that. So you want to come along here and you want to go ahead and start sifting through this code until you find something that looks like that. And I see something right here. This kind of looks like it's got that uh, focal length plus this S underscore Z. And here's my perspective scale. And here's my screen Z. So I found it, but I need to kind of figure out what all these parameters mean. So what I'm going to do is a nice little trick here. And in Flex, you can hold down the Control key, and I believe for Mac it's Command, and you can roll over these different parameters. And when you do, they highlight, and that's a cool trick. 
And what you can do is when they highlight, you can hit the return key or press, and that takes you to where that parameter is. And this has come, become a very valuable tool when it's since trying to figure out how something works. And that took me to something that was kind of strange. I'd never seen this before. What is all this stuff? And whoa, wait, there's a Matrix 3D here. Now, you may not know what Matrix 3D is, but if you've looked at the documentation that we've talked about earlier, the ActionScript 3 documentation, I want you to download that PDF. There is a Matrix 3D, and it turns out that every display object has a Matrix 3D, and that Matrix 3D uh, basically uh, determines how that display object will move on the screen. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. This SZ has something to do with that Matrix 3D. Now, that makes sense. But look at all this coding here. This is really a, lot, a big mess. I mean, it's all hand coded. Uh, there's no real matrix uh, and sense manipulation going on here the way you might see it in math class. It's all hard coded. And so it's really a mess. What does all this stuff mean? And so we need to move back a little bit and go to another class. So let's go ahead and go up to this matrix 3D. Let's click on that and take a look at that. So hold your control key, roll over it, highlights, and click on it. And it'll take you to that class. And then you have your whole math class. And in that math class, you have all your matrix operations. And it actually tells you, explains to you what these numbers are, N11, N12. OK, now it's starting to make sense. Essentially, what you're doing is you're manipulating the matrix 3D objects of all your display objects on the stage. Aha, and you have all these matrix operations in there. Pretty cool. Now it's starting to make sense just by using that control rollover. Uh, press key is taken due to all the important classes that make this work. Let's go back to the ActionScript documentation. I'm going to leave this. I'm actually going to go take a look at the Flash 10 documentation. Maybe I'll get some ideas from that. Now I'm going to help you out a little bit because one of the problems with paper vision is there's just not a lot out there on how its guts work, how the matrix 3D is being used, how some of these operations are occurring, how rendering is occurring. So what we want to do is actually show you that, but you know, like I said, there's nothing out there. You can go to a seminar. I've been to a few. I've been to a John Gurdon seminar on optimization. I've been to a Ralph Howard's seminar in L.A. on uh, paper vision, but they didn't go into how the Matrix 3D works. So what do you do? Well, it turns out that when Adobe created the Flash 10 engine, they incorporated 3D. And they pretty much did what paper vision did with a few exceptions and a few modifications. So it doesn't work exactly the same. But many of the mathematical algorithms and uh, basic approaches are the same. So here's a nice little reference right here. It's help.adobe.com. Uh, and go ahead, and I'm not going to say all this on this video tutorial, but just look at it and get to this reference and click on this, and you're going to get all the material that I show here. And this is actually attached to uh, the uh, download folder as well. And as you scroll down here, you're going to see the matrix 3D class. And you know what? This form is the same form as PaperVision uses. And now as you look at this... Uh, matrix. You're going to see that there is X scale, Y scale, Z scale, but also within these zeros, if you fill those in, you can get rotation, and this last column right here is translation, and suddenly the light should come on. Because what is your camera doing? It's since translating objects toward it. And here's your whole translation column right here. Isn't that beautiful? So you want to translate your camera or your objects toward you. You're going to use these numbers here. And if you're going to scale your objects, you'll use this. But if you're going to rotate your objects, you're going to use these zeros and you're going to put some numbers in there. So now you can actually get your camera, in a sense, rotating and translating on the screen. Or get your objects rotating and translating toward your camera, in a sense. So this is the most powerful piece in creating a camera. So using this Matrix 3D uh, class, we're going to show you how to build a camera in Flash 10. And then we'll come back later and examine Paper Vision 3D. Now, so why am I going back and forth between Flash 10 and Paper Vision 3D? Because we're going to be moving Paper Vision into Flash 10 and explain to you why that's important. Uh, but you have to go back and understand Paper Vision. So Paper Vision 3D 2.0 is a wonderful teaching tool for learning these techniques and why the creators did what they did and how to make it better in Flash 10. Uh, we're going to show you an application in the next uh, video and do something that we call the big three and go into Matrix 3D just a little bit more. So see you next time.